Manuka honey has quickly become a liquid gold currency around the globe, but as demand continues to soar, so does New Zealand's honeybee population. New Zealand now has more than 875,000 registered beehives, that's twice as many as 15 years ago. But the spike in hive numbers isn't all sweet news. Alongside industry-wide concerns about hive losses and disease, Māori agribusiness are raising questions around how to best protect manuka as a species, is there genetic manuka variation, and just how do we grow a native honey industry sustainably? A lot of research has been done on the honey. A lot of research has been done on the actual resource itself. The majority of New Zealand's manuka grows naturally on Māori-owned land. Up until the early 1990s, the benefits of this species were hardly known, and it was often just referred to as a hardy shrub. But things took a dramatic turn when a researcher discovered the antibacterial and healing properties of manuka honey. They found that the seed was sown for huge commercial success, triggering what's now become the manuka gold rush. The sudden increase in international prices in the last decade has meant large commercial entities are jumping in on the gold rush, but often at a rate food resources and honeybees can't sustain. So we lose about 10% of the honeybee hives in New Zealand every year, um, and this is probably partially due to overstocking. The bees basically don't have enough food. So if we understand what that stocking rate can be, we can kind of maximise the return from the number of hives and the number, or the amount of honey you're getting out of each hive. If the bees don't have enough to eat, they basically don't produce any, any honey or they'll consume all the honey in the hive. While there are stocking rates for beef and sheep farming, there aren't any for beekeeping. And without a stocking rate model, hundreds of hives are able to be placed on neighbouring properties, resulting in bees being overcrowded, disease spreading faster and the manuka food supplies exhausted. Protecting the natural manuka resource is of great importance to New Zealand, and in particular Māori agribusiness. They've teamed up with Manaki Whenua researchers as part of a five-year project aimed at better enhancing and protecting their golden opportunity. We sort of commonly refer to it as the honey landscape, uh, and really it's about trying to understand how many hives we can have out on the landscape. The Honey Landscape project starts with researchers working with Māori landowners to collect leaf samples from natural manuka stands on Māori owned land throughout the country. Then the DNA is extracted from the samples and the data used to create a model of the native honey landscape, a model that blends science and tikanga Māori to show how manuka varies in genetic makeup across the landscape or region and how to best reduce hive losses. So at the end of the project what we really want to have is a fairly comprehensive model of the hive stocking rate for a particular piece of land. So they should be able to take our tool, assess what is on the land, look at what sort of vegetation they have, and um, assess how many hives they've got or, or can actually run on that piece of land without having this, this loss rate that, that they're experiencing at the moment. We have a really good story that can sit behind our province story that we would, um, that we would tell to, to people overseas, especially if they're buying some of our um, Manuka honey products in particular. So, but I, I need to be able to back that up with some Western science. So, if we have the DNA work done, and then DNA is DNA. So, at the moment, it, it does look like, uh, from the results I've seen, that uh, some of those Manuka strains are different, um, which is exciting.